Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Helix. Today, we'll be talking about Maddox's past. So let's get started. Our first set, Mirrodin, a planet built of metal, features cards like Chrome Mox and Frogmite to great effect with other artifacts. But even though Mirrodin is a plane of metal, it also has many inhabitants that live side by side. Dark Steel features powerful creatures like Archbound Ravenger, along with the Quad Observer, Memnarch, who has slowly gone insane. But as we see in Fifth Dawn, Mirrodin is flourishing again, like no other time, and with new innovation from its inhabitants, seems to be going forward. What Mirrodin had in metal, Champions of Kamigawa, has in spirits, and in those spirits it flourishes, but it also has cards like Gifts Ungiven, which is one of the most famed cards of magic, and some of its mistakes, like Sensei's Divining Top. Speaking of mistakes, in the battle that wages in Betrayers of Kamigawa, Umazawa's Jet is a powerful sword created to defeat the spirits. But as the dust settles, the saviors of Kamigawa come out of the woodwork, and cards like Kataki's War Sage would have been a great help if they were printed months ago, but unfortunately, they missed the Affinity Wars, and Archbound Ravager was banned, as he and his kinsmen had no competition whatsoever. Ravnica, the city of guilds, is the next on our list, featuring cards like Dark Confidant, also known as Bob, for its designer, and mistakes like Dredge. It is one of the most famous sets in Magic, featuring Golgari, Selesnya, Demir, and Boros. The guild pack, the namesake of this set, keeps together the ten guilds of Ravnica, and this set has the Izzet, the Orzov, and the Garol. In Dissension, the guild pact that bonds the ten guilds of Ravnica is destroyed, meaning that there is no magic between the guilds anymore to keep them in harmony. In game, Dissension features the Ragtos, the Azurius, and the Simic. Cold Snap, featuring the legendary Snowland Dark Deaths, was a defining card in Extended, and Counterbalance, with the help of Sensei's Divining Top, is still a prominent deck in Legacy. But unfortunately for Cold Snap, it was almost unable to be drafted. Moving on to one of my favorite blocks, Time Spiral, gives us a glimpse into the past with cards like Lotus Bloom, which relates to Black Lotus, of course, being suspended for three turns. Time Spiral also showed us time shifted cards, and there was one time shifted card per pack, and it gave us some really cool reprints as well. If Time Spiral referred to the past, then Planet Chaos referred to an alternate present, and this present, instead of having Wrath of God, had Damnation. As we've seen past and a different present, we also need to see a different future, and that future is in Future Sight. As we see in Tarmogoyf itself, the words Planeswalker and Tribal coming to bear. Lorwyn, a planet full of myths, such as the Elves, the merfolk, the tree folk, the giants, and the goblins, and so on. But as we see, Lorwyn is also the debut of Planeswalkers, which are sorcery speed and sorcery activated abilities, which stay on the field and act as individual players. Unfortunately, in Morning Tide, we see that these tribes do not work together in unison. Outside of the merfolks, which are the master traders, these tribes are very separate from each other. Unfortunately for Lorwyn, in Shadowmoor, a dark force comes over the land and turns even the noblest elf into a timid creature, and it changes the personality through the land, and so on. But as we see in Eventide, the fairy are responsible, with their queen changing the land with enchantments to her bidding. Shards of Alara is our next block, featuring five planets, the planets of Grix, Bant, Esper, Jun, and Naya, which all have their different cultures and creatures. But Shards of Alara also comes with a different thing, the mythic rarity, which is featured in both Elsbeth and Shroom the Hegemon. In Conflux, it is shown that the five shards come together to become Alara, and it will be interesting to see 
how the inhabitants of all five planets work together, or the lack of. In Alara Reborn, we see that Jund beats out the other planets for control of Alara. Who knew that a planet full of predators would treat the other planets as prey? After Lorwyn rotates out, Jun becomes the most played deck in Standard and shows off its dominance. But before that can happen, more life has to be given into the core set series, and it is given in M10, with new cards such as Baneslayer, Angel, and many more. This has turned core sets for the better, as they are still great ways to introduce new players into Magic, but also something that competitive players will strive for as well. Zendikar, a land of rugged terrain and numerous explorers, makes for the perfect adventure block. But Zendikar also has quite a bit of value in the form of fetch lands and enemy colors. It really takes World Wake to show us how dangerous the land really is. It is literally walking up and trying to kill you. But we also see powerful cards like Jace the Mind Sculptor, which will easily make it to any tournament table that it will be legal in. In Rise of the Eldrazi, we see what the land was holding so dear. In giant Hedron prisons, the Eldrazi were waiting for someone to release them, and that day finally came, and when they did, there was little hope left for any left on Zendikar, or for anywhere in that matter, as they can travel through space with impunity. Although we have not seen them anywhere else, the Eldrazi are an amazing force that if you do not join them, they will make sure that you perish. Speaking of cross-planet threats, the Phyrexians are back on Mirrodin. They are part metal, part flesh, and they are a hive mind that sees no value in life. So the freeness of Mirrodin's metal planet is a perfectly suited breeding ground for such tenacious creatures. But as we see on Mirrodin Besieged, even the biggest golems cannot defend themselves from the corrupting influence of the Phyrexians. Not only that, but Nicol Bolas has sent Tezzeret to investigate the Phyrexians as he sees them as a threat. But Tezzeret has become an ally to the Phyrexians as well. In New Phyrexia, you can see the product of the war that was waged. Unfortunately, the Mirrodins are very few and far between now, and Phyrexia reigns high over the land. Phyrexia has even chosen leaders, but Mirrodin still has hope in the form of Karn, who is liberated by a planeswalker called Vincer. As we move to our next plane, in Estrad, the humans are doing not too much better, but there is still hope, and they cling to it, as creatures like Geist of St. Traff help them against werewolves, other geists, vampires, and the dreaded ghouls. In Dark Ascension, we see that the creatures of the night are overpowering the humans, and Soren Markov steps in to defeat his brethren while trying to find his angel that he empowered, Avakin, to protect the humans. In Avakin Restored, we see that Avakin, the guardian angel of Innistrad, returns to her place, and as she does, humans retake their place in the balance of Innistrad. Which brings us to modern day Return to Ravnica, which is a glimpse back into the past of Ravnica. But it also shows us that the people of Ravnica have found a way to maintain peace. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, Jesus loves you. Diesel.